The question is the House to now adjourn, and I call the member for Morton. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I love music and have a soft spot for a top 40 list. So here's my top 40 coalition countdown of incompetence. Number 40, the NBN rollout, a lesson in incompetence. Our internet speed has gone from 30th in the world down to 68. Number 39, spending taxpayer money buying air purifiers for the prime ministerial residence, while the rest of the country endured some of the worst air quality in the world, buying a sous vide machine, something I had to Google, but apparently it's very big on MasterChef. Number 38, deploying the robo-debt scheme against one million Australians. It was like an attack dog on its own, our own citizens. But when the coalition got to court, they said, we agree. We don't have an argument. We agree we got it wrong. Number 37, privatising the Australian visa processing system and accidentally recording a $165,000 donation to the Liberal Party from Scott Briggs Southern Strategy. Only two consortiums are bidding for the $1 billion visa contract, and one is Australian Visa Processing, a company linked to Scott Briggs. Number 36, the Reserve Bank downgrading forecasts for economic growth for the third time since the May election. 35, claiming that electric vehicles were set to end the weekend while the rest of the world actually embraces electric vehicles. Number 34, another big drop in retail sales data in December. 33, Australians str struggling with stagnant wages, record levels of household debt and skyrocketing bills. 32, our new Minister of Resources and Water is the government's biggest advocate for nuclear power and a dedicated opponent to global action on climate change. 31, one year after the Banking Royal Commission, and only six of the 76 recommendations have been fully implemented. Don't forget they voted against that 26 times. Number 30, mismanaging the NDIS by taking $4.6 billion out of the scheme and away from vulnerable Australians who need support. 29, repealing the Medivac bill that allowed people who need urgent medical treatment to come to Australia to receive it. 28, ignoring the RBA governor's call to bring forward infrastructure spending to stimulate the sluggish economy. 27, overpromising and underdelivering on infrastructure by $5 billion over their first five budgets. 26, refusing to fast track the Coopers Plain rail crossing in Moreton, a dangerous level crossing that puts lives at risk every day. 25, breaking their promise to release a draft bill for a National Integrity Commission by the end of last year. 24, failing to tackle corruption and promote integrity by establishing the aforementioned Commonwealth Integrity Commission. 23, failing to answer serious questions about the Minister for Energy and Emissions Reduction and his dodgy document. Number 22, treating the ministerial standards like an optional extra. 21, talking about themselves. 20, fighting amongst themselves. Number 19, on the day Parliament came back to remember bushfire victims, the National Party had a blue. Number 18, they're more worried about the marketing spin than a plan for all Australians. Number 17, the Auditor General's report into the orchestrated misuse of sports grants recognised it was used as part of the coalition's re-election strategy. Number 16, ripping off fair income grassroots sports clubs in the aforementioned sports rorts. Number 15, using federal taxpayer money for political purpose, purposes by having LNP candidates including mine, announced successful grants funding for local clubs and not telling the actually elected sitting MP. Number 14, defending their sports rules by claiming it was funding female change rooms, but actually rejecting 12 applications to build female change rooms. 13, another sports rule where clubs didn't even have the chance to apply and the only guidelines seemed to be electoral boundaries. Number 12, the former sports minister having to resign for an undeclared conflict of interest. Number 11, Childcare costs going up by 34 per cent under the coalition. Number 10, wholesale power, power prices going up by a whopping 158 per cent. Number 9, we're in the top 10 now, aged care waiting lists blowing out by a massive 300 per cent. Number 8, Minister for Aged Care falsely claiming that the plan to privatise aged care assessments was supported by the Royal Commissioners. In an extraordinary intervention, the Aged Care Royal Commissioners publicly corrected the minister. Number seven, a scathing interim report by the Aged Care Royal Commission simply titled Neglect. Number six, leadership spills. Number five, no energy policy. Number four, almost no action at all on climate change. Number three, failure to meet our Kyoto targets, and we're not on track to meet the Paris targets either. Number two, an old, fav an old favourite that's been around for over a decade, often sung on that side of the parliament, failure to have any climate change policy at all. And number one, with a bullet, absolute failure to lead during the catastrophic bushfires over this black summer. The Prime Minister didn't lead. In fact, the Waikiki kid left the country. 
Now, I do love a top 40, but less than 30 months until the Australian people can throw the this lot out. Member will resume his seat. The Assistant Minister on a point of order. I just ask the member for Morton to refer to the Prime Minister by yeah, his no, correct title. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. He needs to refer to the Prime Minister by his correct title, so he can just withdraw that term. I withdraw. The question is the House to now adjourn, and I call the member for Cowper. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, tonight I would like to speak on the important work done by this government to improve the national quality and safeguarding framework of the National Disability Insurance Scheme. I congratulate the government on the considerable amount of work done since the enactment of the NDIS in Act 2013 to ensure that people with disabilities are supported to exercise choice and control over the care and assistance they receive. Since 2013, the NDIS has supported some 250,000 people with disabilities and their families. It has provided financial assistance towards the necessary care and services for people with a disability, help people to gain employment and social activities, help people live the life they want to live by providing reasonable supports. But Mr Speaker, I can say it was, a it was timely to have the established the NDIS Quality and Safeguards Commission in 2018 to ensure high standards of quality and care being exercised by NDIS service providers. Mr Speaker, it has come to my attention through constituents, however, concerns with the quality and accountability of service providers, particularly unregistered NDIS service providers. Unregistered providers have just three requirements imposed on them, whereas registered providers have seven requirements guiding their services. Unregistered providers currently are only required to register an ABN, which can be done online, follow the NDIS complaints process and comply with the NDIS code of conduct, whereas registered NDIS car uh, providers currently are required to do the following. Follow the NDIS complaints process, comply with the NDIS code of conduct, have current insurance policies in place, being professional indemnity and public liability, mandatory criminal records checks and work of screening, reportable incident requirements, audited certification against the practice standards, restrictive practice reporting, clear internal and external regulatory processes, specialised ongoing training for support staff, provide every participant with a service agreement strong recruitment and induction processes and governance and quality assurance processes. The lack of requirements for unregistered NDIS service providers has led to a number of unsafe and compromising situations for people with a disability in my electorate of Cowper, situations Mr. Speaker, that I find unacceptable. For example, one unregistered NDIS provider reportedly crossed professional and personal boundaries whereby the service provider developed a personal relationship with the participant. Another example I've been made aware of is an unregistered NDIS provider offering to provide insulin injections to a participant on a daily basis without having the proper qualifications. So, Mr Speaker, it is timely that our government establish the NDIS Quality and Safeguards Commission. Since it commenced operating on 1 July 2018, the NDIS Commission has already taken compliance and enforcement action in response to a breach of code of conduct by more than 15 people and providers who were not registered and were not providing NDIS supports and services. These matters came to the attention of the NDIS Commission through, the complaints, from, through complaints from the participants and referrals from other regu regulatory bodies, including the police. Mr Speaker, it is my view we need additional compliance and education measures to detect the actions of unregistered providers to ensure the safety of NDIS participants. The new National Disability Insurance Scheme Rules 2018 came into effect on 1 January 2020. These rules set out some of the conditions providers must comply with to become and remain registered. Whilst these are welcome for the contribution they will bring to the registered provider market, my concern lies with the responsibility and checks and balances put on unregistered providers. Mr Speaker, as individuals and as members of parliament, I believe we are judged by how we treat the most vulnerable members of our community. People with disabilities can be more likely to experience poverty, live in poor quality or insecure housing and have low levels of education. 
Depending on their disability, they may face physical barriers. They may face communication barriers and language and cultural barriers. It is for these people we must do our very best as a government to tear down these barriers and improve their quality of life through the NDIS. It being 8pm, the House stands adjourned until 12 noon tomorrow.